give it a break. Everybody got something to say. And then want to take everything he say and twist it. Like, nobody complain when somebody leave Apple and go to Google. <laughs> like, aren't they in competition with each other? Mm -hmm. Nobody talk junk about the CEO that leaves Apple and go to Google. Kevin Durant is a big business. He's the CEO of that business. So him going to play basketball for a different team, the CEO decided to leave where he was at and go somewhere else. But there's so many guys in this league that's so stupid, they don't even think like that. Aren't you competitive in your day job if you work for Apple? Don't you want to outdo Google? What's the difference on the basketball court? It's your day job. You want to outdo the competitor. Stephen A., is Draymond right? He's right. And even though I've been, I was the one that, you know, basically, you know, you know, Barkley and mm -hmm. Reggie Miller and others have had something to say, but I called it the weakest move I've ever seen by a superstar. Uh, that doesn't mean that Kevin Durant is a bad person. It doesn't mean that he's an awful human being or anything like that. I happen to think he's a very good guy. I just don't approve of the move because I'm old school. That's my opinion mm. as a pundit. As players that are competitors on the court with him, that's a different ball game, and that's what I took from what Draymond Green was saying, and that's why I have no problem with it. If Draymond Green was calling us out, that would be different because this is our job. But as players who actually play in the NBA, there is a heightened level of sensitivity that he should have in defense of his teammate towards anybody who would have a problem with it because you're Draymond Green, you're playing. You're the guy to drop 32-15-9 in Game 7 of an NBA Finals. I firmly believe nothing to take away from LeBron James and his greatness and what he proved himself to be, nor Kyrie Irving for that matter. But I firmly believe that if Draymond Green hadn't been suspended for Game 5, the Golden State Warriors would be standing here today as reigning two-time defending NBA champions. That's my belief. Having said all of that, I will say that Draymond Green clearly is a guy that is willing to come to the defense of Kevin Durant. <clears throat> and in Oklahoma City, you may have never had that because there was no one with the cachet in position to come to the defense of Kevin Durant when the heat came his way. Whereas in Golden State, when we see something like this, it perfectly illustrates why Kevin Durant would have wanted to go and play with that dude. Because you got a rough rider, blue-collar dog, uh, and I mean that in a good way, because I love me some Draymond Green, who's going to fight for you on the court and off the court. That's what he's talking about. It wasn't that what Paul Pierce said was wrong in any way. Paul Pierce is a champion. Paul Pierce has the qualifications. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He has the qualifications to say everything that he said. But... Draymond Green was completely correct in coming to the defense of Kevin Durant when it comes to contemporaries in the sport because the points that he made were valid. Before I even get to that, where was Game 5 played? Golden State. Right. Did he play in Game 7 in Golden State? Yes. And he balled out, right? Yes. And who won the game? Cleveland. It wouldn't have changed Game 5. Well, I think it would have because I think that Andrew Bogut was hurt for Game 6 Game six and Game 7, and that was a huge deal because you had your, your formidable defender who seven feet, could block shots, could rebound for you, and the fact that he was out and Andre Iguodala was hobbled because he got hobbled at the end of Game 5 or <coughs> you know, Game 6, that's what I'm saying. That Game 5, they all walked into that game healthy. Game 6 and that 7. That was their best chance. I'm saying that, but that's the thing about a guy like Draymond. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not excusing that. I'm saying Cleveland won the championship. Right. I'm just saying that the situations wasn't ideal for game six and seven just like it wasn't ideal for cleveland in the first go round when go to state one the game thing about a guy like saying? draymond is when you have that little borderline crazy player and i like draymond a lot i'm a big fan. i think i probably rate him higher than you do in terms of like where he ranks in the nba hierarchy right now i think a lot of him when you have that kind of personality can he walk the line to stay in the game and the answer was no there maybe it did cost him if you believe they would have won game five look draymond green makes valid points here. It's impossible to deny the fact that this is their business. Only, you know, sometimes the players and the owners get caught up in it, but the fans mostly get caught up in the fact that, the, you know, you should want to win a championship more than more than what? Make money? No. Stupid. No. I want to, this is my job. I want to make money. So I understand what he's, what the analogy he's using, the metaphor is, he, you know, he's the CEO of a business and he went from Google to Apple or vice versa. Mm -hmm. The problem is this. Let me change his metaphor a little bit. People like you, Stephen A. Smith, want Durant to want to be the CEO, and it's as though he was a CEO and accepted a job across the street. At, he went from Google to Apple or whatever and accepted a job as something less than the CEO. That's why people, part of the reason, 
people are going at Kevin Durant. Not just that that's the team they lost to. Not just that in some sense it feels anti-competitive to people. I'm not one of them. I love this. But it feels anti-competitive to people to join a 73-win team. Uh, it does it Now you're going to reverse engineer your greatness. Look, I won a championship, therefore I'm great. No, no, no. You put a team over the top that should have been over the top already. That doesn't necessarily prove your greatness. That's another. But a, but a big part of the reason is, as I mentioned in a previous segment, we want Kevin Durant to have a certain kind of alpha personality that he doesn't have, apparently. And some are holding it, I would say like you, are holding it against him more than others. So, so it's not exactly as Draymond describes it. He's just some employee going from one company to another. He's the top executive at one company accepting some lesser role at a better one. That's what me, people me, are really me, for, for, mad at him about. Let me, let me say this, not debating any points that you make. My point is I'm not debating any of that stuff. I have a problem with him going to Golden State because I think that that is the team that beat you. You're one of the top three players in the world. You're not on some scrub team. You're on a legitimate title contender. And to go to the team that beat you is my issue. Had it been anyone else, I would not have cared. I do have a problem with you going to the team that beat you when both of you are literally on the doorsteps for a championship. To me, it speaks of traitor. That's what it speaks to. And the way the message was delivered. If it were the first round that you lost to Golden State, that's different. You're in a game seven of a conference finals and you go to the team. I don't care what anybody says. That's how I feel. Now, having said all of that, this is the problem. And we, and, and, and you know, Charles Barkley says this all the time. People out there are too damn sensitive. Like, for example, there are people out there that think I don't like Steve Kerr. I think Steve Kerr's a wonderful guy. He's a wonderful guy, and he's proven to be a great coach. My problem is I also think he's incredibly lucky because of the opportunity that he got. And he piggybacks off of what Mark Jackson did. So my issue is not with Steve Kerr at all. It's with the Golden State Warriors taking that opportunity away from uh, Mark Jackson because I think Mark Jackson would have been Steve Kerr. It doesn't mean that Steve Kerr isn't great. It means that Mark Jackson is somebody I believe could have been great as well, but that's an opportunity that wasn't afforded to him. But I talked to the... Uh, uh, there's, there's nobody... There's no owner in sports that I respect more than Joe Lacob. And he, he and I have talked on several occasions, and he's explained his decision, he understands, and we respectfully disagree. But I respect the hell out of that man, and that organization is phenomenal. But this notion that because you disagree with a decision, that you dislike the person, and you hate what they are, what they represent, and what they stand for. No, Kevin Durant is a good dude, just like Steve Kerr is a wonderful man and a great coach. I just disagree with how things go down. And in Kevin Durant's case, there is no... Uh, the Lord himself could not convince me that Kevin Durant did not make a, the, what I consider to be the weakest move I have ever seen from a superstar in my life. A top three player in the world in a game seven of a conference finals loses after being up 3-1, loses after choking in game six, losing after sit up there and coming up short in game seven, and you turn around and go to the very team that beat you? I have an issue with that move. Not with Kevin Durant, the person. Not with Kevin Durant, the basketball player. Not with Kevin Durant, the basketball ambassador, the humanitarian, and all of the wonderful things about him. I have a problem with that one move. It will not change. I don't give a damn what anybody says. I can go to church. The Lord, can, the pastor can sit there and pray with me. The Lord himself, I can't imagine, will convince me that I am wrong about that. I believe it is the weakest move I have ever seen, and I will not change. We're going to be talking a lot more about change. this. I will not change that. It right. will not. It was weak. Let's leave it there. Breaking news, and I chose to do it here, despite your choice of bad suits. Do you know how upset it makes me to hear you guys go back and forth? You know forth? what I know? What do you know? I know that an MVP is somebody that doesn't score five points oh, in a game. Oh, I know oh, that oh, much. That's fine. I know that much. <laughs> I chose to do comedy and act. I could have went the basketball route. I know basketball, see? First Take has became a home for me. You know why? Not only do we come here and talk sports and what's going on in that whole athletic, athletic arena that we follow, but guys, you allow me to come here and be myself. Back here on First Take, Stephen A's birthday, Kevin Hart in the house. Kevin, I need to talk to you.
Let's talk. Do you know what I deal with every day with these egos trying to get a word in? Sounds like a lot. It's a lot. Sounds it's, like it's stressful. Mm. And you have to try not to miff anybody and, you know, get to break, things it's like that, get commercials in. It's not fair to you. Yeah, I need to take a break from it. You know what? Take I have over. No problem it, it, with it's just, over. it's been a lot. I have no it's problem with taking over. Stephen A, especially, a yeah. lot to deal with. Yeah. I want to be nice because it's his birthday, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. your, your chair's a little higher than what I'm used to, but I'll get sure it. Sure, you can get up there, you need help. It's fine. Hey, you, you good? It's fine. It's fine. I just want chairs to... are just. I was just looking out. I was just looking out. These chairs are just. I was just looking out. Excuse just looking... me, Steve. I'm taking over. Okay? Yeah. You're not going to do to me what you do to her. Exactly. I'm going to get some pointers. Okay? I'm going to show you Come how back to run stronger. the show. All right? Thank you. Yes, let's now, do this. Now, this, this is your info here. Yes, yes, okay? yes. First of all, let me see <clears throat> what you would do. Yeah. A few weeks ago, Usain Bolt was on the show and had some kind words for you, Kevin. Uh, Paul's for sound. Am I, I'm not supposed what to kind of an inspiration was Kevin Hart to you? I started following him on, on Snapchat, and then I noticed that he works out every day. Like, there's no day that he doesn't work out, you know what I mean? So, for me, he helped to motivate me, because a lot of the mornings I get up, I'm like, oh. When I, when I go on Snapchat, I see him, and he's like, yo, no matter what, I'm up. I didn't want to get up this morning, but I'm up. So for me, that, that helps me, you know. I'm... And this comedian and actor, from his workout regimen, helps you avoid the curse of the gifted. Yeah, listen, he works hard. I have to give him that much. He's, he's dedicated to always working out. You know what I mean? He always said, he's his new model. He said he, he's got to get the model out there. I go to work before I go to work. Mm. Mm -hmm. Question, do you guys have a problem with you saying his comments? I do. I'm trying to figure out. I want you to lower your voice. <laughs> lower your voice. You're not talking to her. You're going to give me the respect that I deserve. <laughs> Don't talk to me like I'm a man. Go ahead. I have a problem with what he said. I'm trying to figure out how in God's name. I'm done with you, Steve. Max. Well, clearly, there was some glossification mm. going on with Usain Bolt for him mm -hmm. to make those kind of comments. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, aggrandized mm. the entire problem. I'm following you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, with his references to you, yeah. who, while you're very athletic for an actor, mm -hmm. for a comedian. I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. You wanna know what I'm seeing? You wanna know what I'm smelling? Mm. Jealousy. Mm. Jealousy. I'm sorry that my body is perfect. What do you want me to do? I'm sorry that I'm in the most amazing shape that I can possibly be in. I'm sorry that I don't sit down and my underwear is flip over, that little band flip over like it does you guys. Is that why you wore a onesie to the set today? This is called a sweatsuit. Oh, oh. It's called an athletic sweatsuit. I wasn't sure. Because you guys got snap-off suits on that you can grab from the back and do what you want with. You mad at me? <laughs> I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I am jealous of you. I am jealous of you. Um, you're rich. You're making movies every day. But that's not the reason why. Mm. You're living in California in the sunshine. Mm. And because you're living out there, one of many stars, you know, you get to walk down the street and people are like, oh, that's Kevin. Hey, what's up? Mm. While me, I'm bombarded. I'm mm. suffocated. You understand what I'm mm. saying? I have no peace of mind. Mm. People might walk up to you occasionally, and they might want to just take a picture with you mm -hmm. and say, congratulations, great work. Mm -hmm. With me, they want to debate. Mm. My life is harder. Well, Stephen, here's what I want you to realize. A, you're lying. Nobody comes up to you. OK? Stephen A. Smith does not have one fan. <laughs> not one. There's never been a request for a picture. There's never been a request for a debate. <laughs> You are snap, you're, you're snap finger famous. That's the guy, that's the, what's the guy that's on the, uh, what's the, what's the guy that's, uh, what's that, what's the guy that's on the thing, uh, they're on the ESPN thing. That's what they do. They, they that, rev that's it up. actually that's, me. They know his name. That's what they do. Okay? I know you'd like to believe that. No, 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 no. I want you to understand something. I'm a big deal. But you know what I welcome? I welcome fans. I welcome engagement. You know why? Because that may make that person's day. So for you to sit here and tell me that it's hard that people want to come up here and support your craft, it makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach. Sick to my stomach. Also has better reflexes than you. He does. he does. He does. Kevin Hart, let's talk to you Adam for a second. Suit. Let's talk to you, Kevin. Kevin, you got a new movie coming out called What Now? You want to talk about it? 
Well, it's funny you ask me, Kev. Uh, <laughs> listen, man, this is my best work to date. I love this my movie. My best work to date. I'm so happy about this movie. Uh, I made history, and I'm just trying to remake history again. I'm just trying to put my imprint in this generation for me as a stand-up comic, man. So, you know, when you ask that question, it just makes me smile because I'm bringing joy to people's lives. At the end of the day, I love to live, I love to love, and I love to laugh. It's the three L's, man. So when you ask me that, it's just, uh, it's mind blowing. I just ask that everybody go support my movie because it's good. It's funny. Uh, the people have spoken and that's what the people want. Kevin, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Kevin's new movie, Kevin Hart, What Now? is actually in theaters. It's in theaters today. So why don't you guys do him a favor? Go out and support that man. Kevin, any last words? I just want to say that I love coming here. Um, you know, when I come here, you guys are really, really cool about me doing my thing. And it may be because I'm better than you at your jobs. I don't know, okay? The fact that I'm a, a walking almanac. <laughs> the fact that I don't wake up. I ask for respect. Don't point at me. I ask for respect. I don't think I you know what an almanac means. Yeah, oh, sure about that. my name is Matt, and I got on a suit with a nice tie, so I'm <laughs> gonna say something like this. Mm. Almanac, I think you mean an encyclopedia. Mm. I'm Mac, and I know words. Mm. Like elasticize. Mm. I'm sick of it. The both of you. You're gonna get this woman the respect that she deserves from now on, else I will come back. That was the genius Since move, though. You I, just I, come I, to I, yourself, I, I, you tee up I, yourself. Must, I, I do you need killed a it. You shut I do it down. Need a favor. Just to be a genius. Before yeah. you get out of here, I do need to ask you a question because you know you are a basketball fan. Uh -huh. Basketball. Um, you, you're not a basketball player, you're a basketball fan. This is ridiculous. But I have to ask you a question. I wanna know how you're feeling about this NBA season since Kevin Durant has decided to go to Golden State. What are your thoughts? I think, I think we have to respect the business that goes along with the NBA and understand uh, a person's decision. When you have a choice, you have a no choice. Nobody really cares about your sports opinion. You're <laughs> supposed to do something funny. No, I'm going to give He's a real opinion. No, this is a real opinion, OK? He's my friend, and I'm going to give my real opinion on it. You want to see how I know basketball? I'm going to tell you how I know basketball. That man is looking for a championship. That man is willing to get it any way, shape, form. That's what he wants. He wants that in his career. We don't know how long that man plans on playing. He may be close to being done. He may want to get it now. Whatever his reason is, is justified to him. I support that. I back that. Russell Westbrook is also my friend. So Russell Westbrook, being the competitive <clears throat> person he is, and I don't know nobody that has that same hunger and that same anger that that man possesses on a basketball court, this did nothing but fuel the fire for him to be even more competitive and even more great at what he does. So you use it, and on the court, you do what you do best. You play ball. One should have nothing to do with the other. At the end of the day, it's a business. You make decisions that are best for you. You're telling jokes in the movie, though, right? I just laid down facts. And you know what I say after that? What now? Kevin, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. I destroyed so much. this show today. Yeah, you did. You did. Somebody can put me out. Shut it down. Put me out. Yourself. Thank you. I'm thank you. Fire. More first take after the break. Stay Bye, here. Kevin. I'm on, on your fire. first day. I'm on fire. Put me out. Somebody Bye. bring a fire extinguisher out here. <laughs> <laughs>